Hey, Woodstock here again. Hope everyone's doing okay. Just working on this uh, next project. It's a start to finish video, so if there's no splits or anything like that. Pretty excited about it. It turned out pretty well. And uh, pretty pleased overall. Sped things up a bit just to show things in hyper real time. Then I'll slow down later on for the details and stuff. Towards the end. Yeah, this is a rough out stage. Just uh, getting the basic form down before I start adding details and facial features, etc. And uh, this particular piece of wood is a pine knot, which is my um, go-to piece of wood lately. But I'm open for other kinds of wood, and I'm going to start trying some cottonwood bark in the wintertime here, if I can get my hands on some. But we'll see how that works out. But anyway, um, stick around. This video is about uh, 22 minutes long, so if you want to... Fast forward, go to different areas by all means. I'll have some chapter points in the video description where you can jump around and check out different areas of the video. Save you the torment of uh, scrolling around through the video. Yeah, I got this tool here. It's an owl, A-W-L. It's uh, used for uh, marking holes and stuff. And leather workers use it to, I think, punch holes in belts and stuff like that. But I use it for uh, scratching details on the face. And uh, periodically I have to sharpen the tip. Gets kind of worn out, but hey, it works quite well for carving. Especially... Uh, in regards to the details. I've mentioned this previously in uh, other videos. I use a steel wool or wire wool, wire wool as they refer to it in the UK. It's a indispensable thing to have, I say. Uh, it just smooths out the the wood and knocks off uh, rough points. And it's a uh, very handy indeed. Yeah, I use a Stylo Plus Dremel tool for the finish off on all the pieces lately. It's not aggressive and it's uh, very good for uh, hashing in nuances into the face. Yeah, I just threw in a conical 
diamond burr into the stylo plus to get the the mouth more defined and stuff right now and uh, diamond burrs are really nice because they're, they're not too aggressive and they smooth things out and finish them in a non-aggressive manner which uh they're quite nice for that you know yeah the diamond burrs are relatively cheap you can buy them they usually come in a 20 pack i think different shapes and whatnot and different grits as well i think this grit i'm using on this diamond burr is like a medium style grit not too coarse not too smooth the pointy tip of the conical diamond burr allows me to get in the tighter spots yeah i've just started using these conical diamond burrs and i'm pleased with the results. I try not to use the same burrs all the time, but I think I'm going to be using this one quite often because it really proves to be a a nice uh, burr for the kind of type of work I'm doing with the details. Switched over to a super small carbide burr, spherical, to hash out around the eyes. I like the uh, carbide burrs, they're nice, they last a long time. Especially with this kind of wood, it's not very, uh, not very dense wood at all. It's more like a, a plastic-like quality, and it's like a... Your tools last a lot longer, definitely, with this kind of stuff.
It's always uh, back and forth. I'm back here using the owl again to bring out some eye details. And the sharp point allows me to do that. Create some very defined uh, contours on the face. Perfect for wrinkles, age lines, etc. And uh, it's one of those tools you don't leave home. You bring it with you all the time. You can use leather gloves, light leather gloves with this kind of work. If you're doing quite a bit of it, because it'll take uh, the stress off your hands a little bit. But um, otherwise, freehand like this is all right. Yeah, I'm gouging out the area between the face and the, the top part of the, the knot just to give it more depth so it's like it's popping out of the wood a little bit better than just being more flat like. Yeah, this uh, pine knot's another cool knot I found on the Cascade Range outside of Klamath Falls, Oregon. And uh, found it in the rain. And I had to dry them out a bit because they were too uh, wet at first. So, other than that, you got to find these things on the ground. Some people go along the beach as well when the tide's out after the ocean's pushed all the driftwood up on the shore. That's also a good place to look for. It's more polished. The wood is uh, more smoothed out that way from the beach area. The, the knots I get on in the forest are more rougher. But um, either way, the ocean knots are unusual too because you get different pieces of wood from wherever it comes from. But the only problem with that, it's hard to identify what kind of knot they are based on the randomness of the find. Here, here's a Sabretooth Extreme Flame Burr, medium grit. Uh, very nice tool as well. I recommend it for tight spots. These Sabretooth burrs work quite well with this uh, low torque stylo plus and uh, since the stylo plus doesn't have a a lot of uh power or torque it's uh, it makes it less likely to damage your burrs like especially this this burr here looks uh very delicate on the end it might snap off at any moment's notice you th and you got to be a little bit mindful of those This bird gets really in the tight spots quite well. 
and uh, gets rid of a lot of material easily because of the nature of the burr shape and carbide micro tips on it. And it's got some kind of special green coating on it. I don't know what that, I think the green coating just signifies the, the coarseness of the bit itself. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, the bit at all. Perhaps maybe it just gives it some protection as well. I'm not sure. It'd be a good question to ask the company about. This base came upon me just out of the blue. It wasn't anything I've drawn out, preconceived, or anything like that. Um, a lot of times I just let the wood dictate the outcome and see where it goes. It's more like a surprise in the end. And this one was a happy surprise, I'd say. Hence the happy face on the character. It's like an older older guy with a possibly losing his teeth but still with a smile on his face for some reason to me it seems like the male face are is easier to carve than as opposed to the female face but i guess uh i don't know why that is And you definitely see more male faces out there with the wood spirit community. And uh, I'm definitely want to get back into the female faces. I've done a few in the in the past. I want to get back into that, like the perhaps some pixies or fairies like that, more whimsical like. I think they would be very nice to do those again. Another thing, uh, when you're looking for these knots on the ground, you pick them up. If they're too light, they're pretty much rotted and desiccated. And they're pretty much gone. You want to pick up a knot that's somewhat got some weight to it. Otherwise, <clears throat> when you start carving, you're going to um, get into the face and all of a sudden the face is going to cave in or something like that because it's got some hollow spot and rot or something like that. So I'll cover a video on how to look for these things in more in depth and hopefully in a, in a new video coming up here soon. Yeah, here on the West Coast, the pine knots are pretty much uh, all over the place. Um, but back east, they're a little harder to find. Um, you have to go search harder, I would imagine, for those. But they have different kinds of wood back the more deciduous trees back east. And some of those knots are pretty nice as well. It's all a matter of a experimentation. Seems like the volcanic soil of the west along the Cascade Range has an abundance of uh, pine trees. The pine trees like the more acidic soil and uh, makes it tons easier to find those knots.
So yeah, I appreciate the visit. I hope uh, you got inspired or got something out of it in some way or another. And I try to upload videos on a weekly basis. It's always a pleasure and I hope everyone stays healthy and take care. Thank you.